Welcome back, grade 12. In this uh, video on differential calculus, which is uh, part four of the video uh, series, we're going to look at interpretations of graphs of cubic functions. In other words, we're going to look at a graph, try to interpret some of its properties, and also to look at some inequality relationships. Part four, interpretations of graphs of cubic functions. In this lesson, we're going to first of all look at finding equation of cubic functions where the graphs are given. Then we're going to show you how we can interpret graphs of cubic functions and specifically some inequality relationships. And then we're going to do some problems with detailed solutions. And as usual, there'll be an exercise worksheet for you to practice these uh, concepts and skills. Let's start with finding equations of some cubic. We're going to start off with finding equations of cubic functions where the roots are given. Being a cubic, what's the maximum number of roots? That's right, 3. So I, let's say we have the, the other three roots, r1, r2, and r3. Let's look at it graphically. There we have a cubic function. There we have r1. And you can see there's r2 and there's r3. Okay. Being a cubic function, this is the standard form of a cubic function, consists of four terms. I have a3, b2, c, and d. Now, because I have a coefficient of a, I can have a, then x minus the one root, x minus the second root, x minus the third root. Okay. Let's look at an example. Here we have an example, and let's see what is given. We have a root at negative 1, we have a root at 4, and we have a root at 7. So we can actually substitute these roots directly now. So if I substitute those roots, the first one, negative 1, becomes plus 1, positive 4 becomes negative 4, and positive 7 becomes negative 7. But if we look there, there's another point that's given, the y-intercept 0 and 28. Now if we substitute 0 and 28, x is equal to 0, and, and what will be 28? That's right, the fx. So if I substitute the 0, and fx now is 28. And we, if we calculate that, you know that's negative 4 times negative 7 is 28. 28a equal to 28. It's very simple. a is equal to 1. Now, I now substitute a as a 1. And I'm going back to my fx now. So a is a 1. I'll have x plus 1. To expand that, it's advisable to expand by taking the last two brackets first. Expand them. And then I end up with x squared negative 11x and plus 28. And then you can expand that further. Maybe you can do it in an additional step. And the final part there would be x cubed minus 10x squared plus 17x plus 28. And there we found the e equation here. Let's look at the following situation here, where the roots are given, but in this case, only two roots are given. And one of the roots is a, a turning point. There's the one root r1, and there's the other root r2. Now notice R2 here is a turning point. That means that the, these, these, we have equal roots at that particular point there. So that's the form of the cubic equation. Let's insert the first root, x minus R1, x minus R2. As you can see, the R2 is the one that's going to be repeated. Let's look at an example. What is the, the first root? negative 3 and the repeated one 2 see the repeated one is the one that is associated with a either a local maximum or a local minimum there's the y-intercept so let's substitute the two given roots so that's going to be x plus 3 the other one is x minus 2 and it's the x minus 2 that is going to be repeated now we have to find the value of a that we can do by substituting the other points, 0 and negative 12. Substitute that, 
we end up here with that gives us 12 a equal to negative 12 so a is negative 1 now we can substitute the negative 1 back into that expression and we multiply these two factors the second two factors there and we expand that there's the we end up with x squared minus 4x plus 4 and if we remove all of that here we end up with negative x cubed plus x squared plus 8x minus 12. Let's look at the following situation where only one real root is given. There we have it graphically. What is the real root? R1. Now we're going to consider the cubic equation in this form. What is the one root? R1. So we have x minus R1. And the other factor of the cubic here would be a quadratic, which has non-real root. x squared plus mx plus p. Let's take an example. What is the real root here? x equal to 3. So let's substitute that one root. There's a positive 3, so I end up with x minus 3. Then we have a quadratic, and there is a quadratic x squared plus mx plus p. Because we have two unknowns, m and p, I need two points. And what are the two points? Let's look for them. 0 and negative 33, and negative 2 and negative 20. 5, which will be the easy one to substitute. That's correct, the 0 and the negative 33. So let's substitute that. They have inserted 0, and there's my negative 33. This gives me negative 3p equal to negative 33, which, is equal, which leads us to p equal to 11. Now we're going to substitute the negative 2 and the negative 25. There we substitute a negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. And remember, this is a 11. So I end up here with negative 5p equal to negative 25, which leaves us with m equal to 5. Now I can expand. I now know what the m and the p is. So I insert the m value and the p value, and I just expand that, and I end up with a cubic expression, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 33. Now let's look at examples here where there are no roots given. We have three points. Let's say you look at an example there. We have three points. So we have a turning point in this case and a y-intercept and another turning. So we've got three sets of points there. But no roots. See, there are no roots. There is a point. There is a point and we also have a y-intercept. Let's look at this. There's a P and a Q and a R, so there are three unknowns. So if there's three unknowns, we should have one, two, three, right? Three would be sufficient to be able to, we need three. So again, there we start with the easier one, which is 0 and 16. Substitute 0 and 16. So the R becomes a 16, so R is already equal to 16. Now we need to find the P and the Q. To do that, we substitute 1 and 30, 23, and negative 2 and negative 4. Maybe it's easier to start with a positive. Let's substitute the positive value in first, and then we end up with a linear P plus Q equal to 10. Now let's take the negative. Just be more careful with the negative. Negative 2 cube is negative 8. That's going to be 4 times negative 3, which is 12. That's negative 2 Q plus 16. And if we simplify that, we end up with 4p plus q. So now we have to solve simultaneously. Now, remember, you can either do it by elimination or substitution or use your calculator. Whichever method you used, the correct value then would be p equal to negative 2 and q equal to 12. Then we substitute the p and we substitute the q, and we've already worked out the 16. And there's my cubic equation. Example. This one is slightly different. We don't have two turning points, but one turning point. How do we find the cubic equation if we only have one turning point? Let's see the, what we have there. There we have the form of the equation. How many missing values there? a, b, and c. So that means I need three points. But I look there, 
there, there's no other point. You know, it's nothing hidden there. There's a two and a one and a nine. But this is a turning point. I will come back to that turning point. Again, start with the easier point. It will be zero and two. That will give you a C. Now we have two unknowns. So let's substitute the X and the Y. In this case, one and nine. We substitute that. We end up with A plus B equal to 10. Now we already substituted 1 and 9 and 0 and 2. There's no other point. What do we do now? But let's see. They mentioned that 1, 9 is a turning point. What do we know about turning points? That's correct. The first derivative is equal to 0. So here we're going to use calculus to assist us further. So we find the first derivative equated to 0. And x equal to 1 is where the first derivative is 0. So Differentiate that gives us 3ax squared minus 6x plus b equal to 0. Substitute 1. 1 squared is 1, so that becomes 3a negative 6 plus b. And we can simplify that, and that leaves us with 3a plus b equal to 6. Again, two unknowns. So I need two equations. Solve them simultaneously. Whichever technique, what are the techniques again? either substitution or elimination or just use your calculator a equal to negative 2 and b equal to 12 are the two values and once you have the values you can write down the equation there now next we're going to look at interpretation of graphs of cubic functions and specifically some inequality relationships we're going to look at okay Let's look at uh, uh, where a curve increases or decreases. Let's look at a cubic function. There we've got a cubic function. And what does this point represent here? That's right, the local maximum. And this one, local minimum. And at the local minimum, I have a value A associated with it, which is the x-coordinate. What do we refer to the A and the C here? That's correct. The critical values, right? Critical values are the x-coordinates of the local maximum and the local minimum. Now, if I want to find out where the curve, the curve increases or decreases, always start from the left side. Follow it here. What is happening here? It, it is increasing. And from there, it decreases until it reaches the minimum and then it increases. So the critical values will assist you in determining where a curve increases or decreases. So it increases from this side up to the A, then it decreases again up to the C, and then it increases again. So let's do that. Increasing. Where is it increasing? From negative infinity to A. And increasing means, I mean, there is the, the first derivative greater than zero or the gradient is greater than zero, or the m value is greater than zero. So there it's from negative infinity to a, and then this one is from c to infinity. It's adv advisable to write it rather in interval notation. It's much simpler to write the intervals in, in uh, intervals where it increases and decreases, preferably in interval notation. There. Decreasing. Where did we say it was decreasing? Let's see where is it decreasing. It decreases if the gradient is less than zero. And if you now look at the decreasing portion, there's the decreasing, the one in green. I've color coded the increasing and decreasing. Decreasing is in green. And it decreases from A to C between the two critical values. Right. So if we want to determine intervals for increasing and decreasing, we use the turning points, right? We determine the critical values using the turning points. Now, this is another concept we're going to refer to, and this is the concept of concavity. Let's look at our cubic function. There we've got a cubic function. And this point here, remember when we, we sketched curve, what was, what was this one? That's right, this is the local maximum, and this one is the local minimum. But what is this one here? 
this is the inflection point. You still remember? There the tangent was above the curve. And at the inflection, the tangent is, will then be below the curve there again in this situation. And here we have a critical value associated with that inflection. And that's the x-coordinate of the critical value. How do we determine critical value of uh, uh, inflection? That's correct. We find the second derivative. So let's just see, look at this graph now. So if I look on the left side of my inflection point, this part of the curve, right? Can you see there's the inflection and I go to the turning and I turn and it just goes down, 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 right? This type of curvature is known as concave. It concaves down. And actually the arrow can help you also to determine that. See, there it goes down that way. That's concave down. So the so on the left of the inflection point, and on the left there would be, what will the interval be? That's correct, from negative infinity to E. So it's a second derivative must be negative. Then X will be between negative infinity and the critical value of the inflection point there. Right? Let's look at the other one. Now, you can even see there, it's from the inflection, it turned and it went up. So this type of curvature here is known as concave. I'll let the arrow sort of assist you in determine the type of concavity. And you can see it's from the inflection point on the right side of the inflection point. So that is concave up and it's concave up when the second derivative is greater than zero. In this case, it's from on the right side of the inflection point. That is from E to infinity. And you just look at the two graphs there. You can see the concave up, concave down is the one in green, and concave up is the one. And let it, from the inflection, you can see it goes up that way. And the inflection point is where the concavity changes. It changes from up to down. Now we want to compare the different curves, right? The function its first derivative and its second derivative. Let's say there's the curve there, so that's the f, that's the one in yellow. That's the, we're going to compare that. And if I look at this curve here, this one has a x-intercept and an x-intercept and an x-intercept, right? And there we have the local maximum and the local minimum, and there we have the inflection point. And now you can see these faint dotted lines there. It's just to help us with the intervals. You can see there it's from negative infinity to that point. Then from this point up to this one. Then from there up to the that critical value. From there to the intercept. Then to a critical value. Then to an intercept. And then to infinity there. Okay. So the cubic function is the one there in yellow. When we have uh, the first derivative of a cubic a function is a function like this and which one which shape you still recall the shape that's correct it's a quadratic right so if you have a cubic function its first derivative is a quadratic and there's the quadratic there and this quadratic if you look at it carefully that critical value for its local maximum it becomes the x intercept there right and the critical value for the minimum becomes the x-intercept of the first derivative. And if you find uh, the second derivative, the second derivative of a cubic is a, what that's right, it's a linear function. Okay? So this is important for you to know. A cubic function, its first derivative is quadratic, and its second derivative is a linear function there. Let's just do them individually. There's the cubic function. Okay, just a little bit different there. So I have a cubic function here. And what are the x-intercepts here? There the x-intercept is at the point k. It's a bit small there. There's the x-intercept at point k. That only has one x-intercept. Let's look at that same one. And let's look at the quadratic function for that. Uh, the quadratic is the first derivative. There is it there, right? And you can see the critical value A will match with that x-intercept there. The critical value C for the minimum there. 
So there I have the critical values are actually the x-intercepts of the first derivative. And a lin the second derivative is a linear function. And there we have the linear function, right? And this x-intercept corresponds actually with the turning point of the quadratic. And that critical value here, that's actually the critical value associated with the inflection point. Now let's look at some inequalities now. The inequality interval for, what does this mean? This means the first derivative less than zero. What does first derivative also mean? The gradient is less than zero. If the gradient is less than zero, what does that mean? That's correct. It means the graph is decreasing, right? So if I have a first derivative, I look at the critical values. And the critical values we obtain from the turning points. So in what's the, the critical values are A and C. So that means where's the graph? Decreasing. Can you see where the graph is decreasing? Let's follow there. There the graph is increasing and then it decreases. So where does it decrease? That's correct, between the two critical values. So it decreases there. I have to look at the turning point, which gives, and then it decreases between A and C. Let's also look at the second, you see there, this is the original function f, and this is its derivative. Remember, this is cubic, and this becomes quadratic. So the x-intercepts correspond with the critical values associated with the local maximum and local minimum. So the x-intercepts here, are actually the same as the critical values for the local maximum and local minimum. So if we have the first derivative less, so I just look at the first derivative graph, not that one. So where is the first derivative less than zero? You can see this dotted, there's the less than portion. The solid one is the greater part. So where is it less than? Between That's correct, between A and C, okay? So, in this case, I, I look at the graph and I look at the portion that is below the x-axis, okay? So, there I use the x-intercepts and it lies between them from A to C. And you see it's exactly the same answer. So, if I can find the first derivative less than naught by looking at the original graph, but then I have to look at the critical values there. But if I have the the graph of the first derivative, I look at the x intercept. Now you're just going to have a summary of a comparison between the intervals for fx and f prime x and the second derivative there as well. So let's start off with the original function, right? And I've indicated all those various intervals. Let's just check again. Which one is the d? d associated with the local maximum. And the M, that's right, the M is associated with the inflection point. And let's look at uh, C. C is an x-intercept. So let's look at Fx. Now Fx, I'm, I'm looking now at the yellow. Right, we're going to use Fx now. And what are the critical values if I look at my graph there? Here, the, the, what's going to be critical here would be the, if it, Fx is equal to zero, where is fx equal to zero? By looking at the x-intercepts. Okay? And what are the x-intercepts there? In this case, it is... Let's just look at it there. You can see there's the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are at a, b, and c. And because I have an equal, my answer is x equal to a, x equal to b, and x equal to c. Now we want to see where is fx greater than zero. fx, so I look at my f graph, where is it greater? What does greater mean? That's correct. Greater means where is it above the x-axis? So I look at where is the graph. You see this portion? There is a graph. This is the above portion of the graph. And where is it above? That's correct. You have to use your intercept. It's between the intercepts there. Between A and B. And where is it also? There's another piece that's above. Between C and infinity. Okay? Let's look at where is it? Where is the fx below? So I have to look at the below portion now. Let's look at the below. There's the below part. Can you see? This piece and this piece is below. So I only focus on the below. You can actually cover up the top part. 
but if you take a piece of paper just cover up the top and you can see where is the less than and here you see there are two less than portions from negative infinity so less than naught actually mean below the x-axis so it's between come again between negative infinity and a and then from b to c so if you want want to find the inequality with fx use the x-intercepts now we're going to look at let's take that graph away we're going to look at the first derivative right now first derivative means we have to look at what we have to look that's correct we have to look at the turning points right so the turning points we got it here in this nice blue color and you can see where the turning points occur the turning points are occur that's correct at d and there's another one at e so there i've got my two turning points so if you want to do any inequality or any relationship with a first derivative you need to use your turning points so i now have the turning points and i now focus on the critical values d and e and the other points here would be negative infinity and d and from d to e and from e to infinity now where is it that's equal to d and equal to e but now if i want to find out where the graph is let's look at this one i want to see where is it that's there's a one greater than zero what do we mean by first derivative greater come we had it earlier that's correct we have to see you see there's the greater portion right now first derivative greater than zero actually means where's the graph increasing there's the increasing part it increased there's the increasing and always work from the left side from increasing there and then increasing there okay and you can see it increases from negative infinity to d and from e to infinity you see i've used that symbol there that's a mathematical symbol that means or in mathematics we always try to write symbols so we're not restricted to a specific language there we just say, use that for or Right, you can even write in the word or it will be acceptable it is correct anyway then where's the first derivative less if greater was increasing what would less be can you picture the decreasing that's right just look let's see now there's the decreasing you see there's decreasing and it decreases between the two critical values there from the maximum to the minimum so decreasing is between d and e now let's look at the second derivative let's take that away let's look at the second derivative second derivative the critical values you obtain from your flexion inflection point what is the inflection point there's only one inflection point let's find the inflection point that's right at m so we're only going to use this interval negative infinity to m and m to infinity nothing else so when you work with a second derivative you only use the inflection point where's the inflection point x equal to m now let's look at second derivative greater than zero there it means that's the second derivative greater than zero and what did we say that that one is just follow it inflection ends going that's right we have to look greater than zero means where is it concave up and you can see it's concave up on which side of the critical value in this case on the right side but always on the right depends on the shape of the graph and that's from m to infinity the less than means where is it that's right concave down see there's the concave down inflection that don't look at this is not going up it's going up but it turns so that is concave down and it's from negative infinity to m so that there gives you a nice summary so when you have the function only you you use the inter x intercepts when it's the first derivative you use the turning points critical values and when it's the second derivative you focus on the inflection point and there i'm just putting that back again right so there you can see which one this is the down and the other one is the up now here we're going to look at one which is actually a level four type of question where we're going to interpret fx times its derivative right or some a uh, few other inequalities that we have here so let's take our function there again 
there's our cubic function there and we've got all the points you also know what these ones mean that's the local maximum local minimum there's the inflection those are the x-intercept you do not use y because we say determine the values of x so let's look at this here to be able to understand greater than zero what does greater than zero mean greater than zero means positive now what times what gives you a positive number come from grade uh, five already positive times positive or negative times negative so i'm going to look at the two options where the fx is positive and the same time the first derivative must be positive positive times positive okay or we can have the other option we can have negative times negative so we're going to look at both let's look at each one separately positive times positive and then negative times negative now let's look at the f positive first so what does this mean this means the f must be positive where is the graph positive and the same time where is it increasing so let's look at this here can you see there's the positive part of the graph so first try to see where is it positive there is it so there you know there it is positive now let's look at this positive part of the graph and which part of it is increasing what is he doing there increasing in that part decreasing in this part that's correct increasing so how many increasing parts do we have that's correct right so if we look at that and now I've put in shaded in the increasing there's increasing and there's increasing now we can write the answer down from you can see it increases from the x-intercept to the turning point that's from a to d then it's from the x-intercept which is c up to infinity there right so this is the one option that we have let's look at the other option when I say that means where's the graph negative where does negative mean where's the graph below see what you can do you can cover up the top and let's look at the bottom part of the graph there's the bottom part you see I only have the bottom part of the function the portion below the x-axis now if we look at the one below we must now see which part of it decreases what is this one doing increasing in this one decreasing in that one increasing so it increases if you look at that you see so the only place where this decreases there is only decreasing portion so that's from b to e and we can write that down b to e now we can just combine them see if you write it down like this and you put a O and that perfect or you can just write it there from a to d or b to e or c it doesn't matter in which order you put it i just place it in the order as it appears there you know first from a to d then from b to e and then from c to infinity but even if you wrote the answer just like that it will be acceptable you can also put the word or in between so please remember don't look at the one situation positive can be positive times positive or it can be negative times negative the, in the previous example we look at the product where the product was positive here we're going to look at where the product is what does less than zero mean where the product is negative now what times what gives me a negative that's correct a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive right let's look at our function again there we've got the function with all the intercepts and all the critical values so we're going to look at where the graph is positive what does positive mean look at the the portion of the graph that's above and then looking at that above portion we'll have to check where is it now decreasing then we have the other option i can look at below the graph and then looking at the below graph uh, below the x-axis i then have to see where is it increasing let's do that this one you have to be very careful when you do that if positive means above so let's look at the above portion there's the above portion now of the above portion which part of it is decreasing that's increasing that's decreasing how many decreasing parts are there only one right let's see there there's it you see there's the decreasing part there right 
I've color coded there. There's the decreasing. And where's the decreasing now from D to B? So I can write down the interval. Let's do the other one. You have to look at below the x-axis again. So I look at below. You don't focus on the above. And of the below, I must see where is it increasing. There it increases. There it decreases. And there it increases there. So let's look at that. And there are two parts where it increases. And if I write that down, and it's the or, you can just write it like that. But you can just bring them together from D to B. That's actually in the middle. That negative comes on this side. But if you put it in a different order, it would be immaterial. Right? As long as you, if you're not sure, just leave it like that. You don't have to combine it that way. And that was the question that we look at, the product less than zero. Now we're going to look at actually some problems that will utilize all these inequalities and interpretations. Let's look at the first problem here. Let's say we are given a function f. So there's the function f. It's the, the sketch is given with intercepts. And they tell us there's the intercept. Just make sure when you read that, negative 1 and 0, 4 and 0. Always double check whether everything is there. 7 and 0, 0. So if it's not there, you insert it. 1 and 36 are turned. There's 1 and 36. And normally you, it's advisable to actually highlight the given information. There's even an inflection point. There. So maybe this could have been done. You had maybe a question prior to this. You sketch it and all those points were already calculated. Then usually a question will I would have now questions based on the graph. Right? So you have to read it from the graph. Determine the values of x, so the values mean can be more or one. If it's an equal sign, it will only be one, right? But if it's an inequality, it's normally an interval. So this must be in interval form, interval form, interval form. fx less than zero. There we have the given information. Let's look at the first question. fx less than zero. So which points should we require here? That's correct. The x-intercepts. And what are the x-intercepts? Let's look for them. Negative 1, 4, and 7. Okay. Now, what does fx less than 0 mean? How do we interpret that? What must we look for? That's correct. We must look at the value below the x-axis. Which part of the function is below the x-axis? Which part of the curve is below the x-axis? And can you see the portion below? That's correct. It's, there's the portion below. So we just have to write it now in interval notation. We just focus on the x-intercepts. So in this case, it is from negative infinity to negative 1. And the other one is from 4 to 7. So we've only been using the x-intercepts there. Let's look at the second part. Let's have the uh, graph back again. If is decreasing. It's quite straightforward. Where's the curve decreasing? Let's follow this one. What's it doing here? Increase and decrease and in. So which points do we need here for decreasing? So in that's the turning points. So that is we're going to focus on the critical values there, which we obtain from the turning points. And that's the decreasing portion as we mentioned earlier. So now we just have to write it in the correct notation from 1 to 5 comma 7 or you could even say x between 1 and 5 comma 7 but this one is much simpler and easier to use I can recommend that you use the integration let's look at the third question f is concave down so which point do we associate with concavity that's correct the inflection point so where's the inflection point you see it that's correct at x equal to 3 comma 3 Right now, which one is this? This one is the let's follow it, and which one this, this one is up and this one is down. So, on which side of the inflection point must we, we must work on the left side? So, let's see, there's the, inflec the inflection point, it goes there, it turns, and it goes down. So, where's it down on the left side? Don't write down left side, we just write it in interval notation. If you see, that tells you start there, end there. That's easy. In see where you start and see where you end. 
Let's look at a second example now. There we have the information again read. See, it's the same graph, but we're just going to have different questions on it. Right? Same points, just different. We want to see how do we answer the, uh, these questions here. There's the graph. Let's look at the first one. You see there, there this is in a, a written in function notation. First derivative greater than naught. What does that mean? First derivative greater than naught. Which points do we associate with the first derivative? That's correct. The turning points, right? Can you see the turning points? And what does first derivative greater than naught also mean? Where's the graph? Increasing. So we need to focus on the turning point, the critical values we get there. And now we're going to see where is it increasing. Can you see the increasing portion? Let's try to find it. And there's the increasing. Can you see? That increase and that increase. The, that portion that we left out is the decreasing. Now we just have to write that in. in see, it's quite easy if you fo uh, do it this way. Work from the left, which is from negative infinity to 1. And then the other portion is 5,77 up to infinity. We always have open intervals here. Let's look at the second problem. That's the same graph. What does this mean? See, there's no words here. It's in a written in mathematical notation. Second derivative we associate with, that's correct, the inflection point. And what's the inflection point? Critical value there is x equal to 3,3. Right now, what does second derivative greater than zero mean? That's correct. Where's the 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 curve concave, concave up? And you see the up portion? Is it the one on the left side or on the one on the right side? This one or that one? Sound like an optician now? So there's the up. You can see there from the inflection turn and it's going up. And this is on the right side. The right side I need positive infinity. So it's from 3,3 .3 to positive infinity. Let's look at the third question. Yeah, this is one like we had earlier. And here we have a specific example where we have a product. This product, what does this mean? The product is positive. So we have we're going to, for the f we're going to use the x intercepts. And for the first derivative, we're going to focus. So there we have the x-intercepts at negative 1, 4, and 7. And then the turning points are at 1 and 5,7. But positive, we have two options. So if I say the f-graph must be above, then the same time I must see where it increases. And I look at the other option. Opposite of that would be below and decreasing. Let's look at and there we have it. Can you see there? This portion is above and it's increasing. This portion is above and it's increasing. This portion is below and it's decreasing. So if there are three intervals. So there's quite, you see, try to sort out that. And you can see there's, it's above and in, you can just focus on the above. There's the above. And that was the increasing part of the above, which is that portion here. There's the below. And that is the decreasing part. And then we can just read off the intervals from there. Okay. There's it from negative 1 to 1. And this is from 4 to 5 comma 7. And that's from 7 up to infinity. Let's look at the third problem here. We're taking the same graph, but we, have, we just have different questions on it. The point of inflection of G. But this was the F graph. What do they say is G? So there's that. So let's look at questions here. The point of inflection. So I need to, there's my point of inflection. But this is the point of inflection of F at X equal to 3,3. ,3. But now, now they have a new f function defined by GX equal to negative FX. What does negative FX mean? That, that's correct. That means the graph is reflected in the, so that's the original inflection point, but we want to re, uh, get the reflection in the x-axis, right? So reflection in the x-axis means that 
that one will stay a one, but that 36 become a negative 36, right? And that 5,7 stays, it's the y values that change. So if I reflect that in the, so the x value is going to remain the same, it's the y value that change. When you reflect in the x axis, the x coordinate remains the same. So we just change the 10,6 to negative 10,6. Let's look at the second question in this problem. There's the graph. Let's look at the question. The values of x for which h will be concave down. And their h is de this defined this way. What does f negative x mean? That's correct. It means where the, the graph, must, the, the f curve must be reflected in the y axis. Okay. Concave down. The original one is concave down. There is a concave down from negative infinity to 3,3. ,3. But h is the reflection in the y-axis. It's just reflected in the y-axis. So in other words, this point will go this way. That one will go that way. So let's just see. There, there's, this is what the reflection looks like. And now can you see where is the concave down now? Concave down. You see there concave down was on the left side. Here concave down is on the right side. So it's from this point, and that point is from negative 3,3, see, from negative 3,3 .3 up to infinity. Let's look at the third question in this, of this problem. Determine the turning points of k, and their kx is def defined as kx equal to fx plus 1. Okay. Let's see what we mean by that. Turning points. What are the turning points of f? Those are the turning points we can read it off from our graph. But now, x plus 1, what does that mean? When you have x plus 1, that's correct. The graph is shifted 1 unit. Plus 1 means 1 unit to the left there. If it's negative, subtract 1, it means to the right. But positive 1 is 1 unit to the left. So I must take 1 unit to the left so which coordinate is going to change? That's correct, the x coordinate there. So it's 1 subtract 1, which gives me 0. The other one there is 5,7 subtract 1, that gives me 4,7. So these 0 and 36 and 4,7 and negative 14,8, that those are the turning points of the new function. Let's look at the fourth problem now. If g is a cubic function, so they have a cubic function, it's not drawn. gx, so all these, this is all the information that's given, and now they want us to draw this on a grid. So we're going to try to interpret that. So you must, there's no equation given. There are some statements here. g3 equal to g prime 3 equal to g double prime 3 equal to 0. Let's look, let's, look, let's use the given information g3 equal to 0. What does that mean? x is equal to 3 and y equal to 0. That is an x-intercept at 3, 0. Let's plot that point in the meantime, and there we have the point there. Let's look at the other given information. First derivative, substituting 3 equal to 0. So there we have x is equal to 3, but first derivative means there that I have a turning, also I have a critical value at so there's a critical value here. Then we have the second derivative, 3 equal to 0. Second derivative, that means that I have an inflection, right? So we have an inflection point at x equal to 3. So this is actually not a maximum or a minimum. It's actually an inflection. g0 equal to 27. That means x is 0, y is 27. That is a y-intercept. Let's plot the y-intercept, and there we have the y-intercept. Then we have second derivative x greater than 0, but x must be less than 3. So on the left side of 3, what does this mean? Second derivative greater than 0, that's correct. That means I have concavity. So it's concave up. So on this side will be concave up. And which way is concave up? Let's see. There is concave up. Then we take second derivative less than 0. 
second derivative less than zero that implies I've got concave down so let's see concave down and there we have concave down and there we have our function let's look at problem number five here we have the following given information we have a graph of a first derivative quadratic there and there's the graph of the first derivative right and then we have some questions based on this graph of the first derivative let's look at each of the sub questions now there's the graph of the first derivative as given determine the values of x for which the graph of g will be strictly increasing is this the graph of g no this is the graph of the first derivative but the graph of g decreases if the first derivative is less than zero so where's the first derivative here less than zero so that's what we need to do first derivative less than zero it's below the x-axis you see below the x-axis there is the first derivative and that is between negative 4 and 2. Let's look at the second question. We must find the x-coordinate of the local minimum point. Now, local minimum would be where the gradient changes from negative to positive. So let's see now. There, the gradient is positive and then negative. So this is not a local minimum. Here the gradient is negative and then it becomes positive. So this is where we'll get a local minimum, right? Changes from negative to positive. There is negative and then positive. Therefore, we have a local minimum at x equal to 2. Let's look at the next one. We want to find the x-coordinate of the inflection point, right? The inflection point of g would be the second derivative right but now we have the first derivative there so the inflection point if this if the first derivative is a quadratic the inflection point would be between those two x-intercepts there so between them exact exactly in the middle how do we find that we add the two negative four plus two then we divide it by two and that gives us negative one or if this is the first derivative that's given for inflection point you just find the second derivative so let's differentiate that that gives us 2x plus 2 equated to 0 solve for x and we get exactly the same answer there you can either find the inflection which is the midpoint between the two x intercepts or you can actually calculate the second derivative and equate it to 0 Let's look at the following question. We must find the gradient of the tangent. Gradient of the tangent is the first derivative. So actually we can use the first derivative. So the first derivative is actually the graph where x is zero. So if I make x a zero here, I end up with negative eight. Or I can actually look there. If there's zero, there's the, I can actually read it also. There's x zero, and it corresponds with negative 8. So the gradient here in this case, m is equal to negative 8. Before you actually start with your exercise, I recommend that you go through some of the work, worked out problems that we've done in this video. Take the question, try to answer it on your own. After you've done that, then you compare your answers to the solution that was given and once you've done all of them then you should be ready to do the exercise worksheet here and these questions are all adapted from external dbe question papers there so there we have a, a given information and they ask you to work out the values of b c and d you see the b c are three unknowns so they need to give me three there we've got three points there already right then they want the coordinates of b what is b the coordinates of the turning point we want the equation of a tangent then we must sketch the what must we sketch here we must sketch the second derivative and the second derivative of a cubic is 
Can you still remember that? That's correct. It's a linear function. And here we want to know where is it concave up. And we have a similar type of situation here. There's some given information and some questions there. There we even have one similar to what we did earlier. And then there are some more questions. There we've got two turning points. You can see what we need to do there. There's another one. And we have different questions based on that. There the equation is given. The graph is sketched and there are some questions. Then you have to do some interpretation as well. Same applies to question number five. Here we have average gradient, that average gradient. Some of the work we did in, in um, part two. Yeah, it's just a different form. And here they also want you to sketch the graph. Question number seven. There the first derivative is given, something similar to the last question. Let's look at this question here. This is the last question, question eight. It's adapted from the June 2015 paper. Here we have the graph of a first derivative. There's the first derivative. And we tell you the first derivative at one and the first derivative at three, they are both equal to zero. And we also have the first derivative at zero equal to six. So you have to interpret that, right? And then we have questions similar to what we asked for from this first derivative graph. You can read off the stationary points, see where it is decreasing, explain why that is a local minimum or a maximum, find the x coordinate of the inflection, etc. Right? So th this is a similar question to what we did previously. And that's the last question. All of these questions here are adapted, uh, adapted versions of uh, questions from uh, DBE external papers, like this one here, June 2015. But I've slightly adapted some of the questions, and maybe I've even added one or one or two additional questions as well.